So day 10, what we're gonna do is warm up like she's had a big break, so we're gonna just make sure all of our gears are there. Alan Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo! Baby Flo! <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Alan Taylor will win! She's riding an amazing horse out of Baby Flo! One of her babies for Baby Flo! For Flo to the Flo! Flo! Hush, buddy! Hush, buddy! What's up, Flomies? Welcome back to my channel. You guys, we are still at the Ruby Buckle, and we are hoping to be more consistent than we were in the fraternity. We, me. Um, so hoping for these open horses to give us, you know, we're, these are our horses that we ride all the time. This is a little bit more fun, a little bit less thinking, um, but at the same time, they're winning the open with a 16.6 .6 on a standard pattern. I think it's a standard I'm pretty sure it's a standard pattern. I haven't seen the measurements for myself, but the 3D here is akin to like pro rodeo checks evaluation on a standard. So if it is a standard, it is smoking, smoking fast. All right, it is time to watch Cody master the alleyway on Mojo and make a beautiful run. Let's check it out here. Beautiful job. Sit up tall, tall, tall. Tall, tall, tall. Go ahead. Cody Harmon, now cleared it up. for Cody Harmon. That was gorgeous in a 17-4 on a standard pattern every day of the week. We will take that. Now it's time for me and Lolo to make a run. Let's see what the queen of consistency is going to do today. She's been out for breeding season, so now I've been legging her back up for this. She's still thick, still really thick, but let's see what she does. five I'll take it all day long and I know we can come back and be faster on round two now round two in the fraternity I hit a barrel on both of my horses that aren't barrel hitters so I'm hoping that I don't get that juju all over us for our open horses it's time for Cody again beautiful in the alleyway to go make another smoke and run let's check it out here sitting up good and tall I, I jinxed us, I guess. I mean, that's just sometimes how the cookie crumbles. You hit a barrel trying to be faster. We needed to be a lot faster, so we were trying to get after the average money, but at the same time, let's get some of that go-around dough, and it just didn't work out the way we wanted it to. But now let's see if Lolo can take one for the team and bring it all back together. Here we go. Yeah. 
you know, it just, some days the windshield, some days the bug. That's just how that went down. The ruby buckle I know wasn't our like best work, but I will say if you watch the previous vlog, Strut came home with $750, his first fraternity and his first fraternity check, and I'm so excited about that. So we're gonna have many more really amazing stops and I cannot wait to see this horse grow and do more things. Plus our rodeo horses, we know that they'll go do some really big things this year. Speaking of fraternity, it is time for us, I'm doing a thing on TikTok where I've made a series of training each day on my slot horses. I'm calling it like the road to the juvenile because I've got a juvenile spot at the BFA. The T is that spot costs $5,000. Last year I turned out because I felt like I was rushing my, my juvenile colt. This year I've got four candidates but one spot. So we're gonna take you guys through watching those four narrow down to one or zero if none of the horses mentally can take it we just shut it completely down so i want you guys to be involved help us make these decisions as we're training these horses i've got about 10 days on my horses around the barrels they've had a year of training and solid solid foundation but now it's time for these four candidates to show us which one is ready to go to the juvenile i've been doing a really cool series on tiktok and realized that a lot of you guys don't go over on tiktok to see my stuff but i've been training a barrel horse day by day cutting out nothing and putting it on TikTok and that is actually how me and my best friends met on YouTube like what 13 years 12 years ago something like that that's all the content that I used to make was day in and out of me training horses if you've been an OG you know that that included like me training and I had two different color gloves and all sorts of different stuff so I am going to be um, using Golo as our training horse and showing you guys the behind the scenes because that is some content I'm really passionate about right now. And I wanna show you guys how it's done because it's so exciting to take these young horses and um, show you what we can do with them. The other thing is I love the trolls that are on my posts because they're like, oh, you're just being so sloppy and you're not feeling the lead changes, etc." I want to let you guys know my training style is very much like drunk five-year-old. And why I do that is strategic. I, I know that when we run these guys at 30 miles an hour with 20,000 people in the stands cheering very loudly, that we want to have these horses where we can trust them a lot. And I can't do that unless I know that I've got them really trained. If I nitpick on a horse about every single little teeny tiny thing, and I also do it in tennis shoes and that really drives people crazy. Um, but if I nitpick about every single thing, then that horse is going to require me to nitpick and continue to nitpick because they're gonna get lazy and turn their brain off and be like, well, she's gonna tell me what to do anyway. I like to think of it like this. Don't discipline your 17 year old until they sneak out of the house. There's no point to put bars on the windows and do all those things. That's not a way to develop trust. Instead, let them sneak out, commit the crime, and then actually um, make them do the time. So for us, it's gonna be really simple, really easy. I'll be using a slow twist snaffle and split reins today. I don't like to use martingales or draw reins or anything like that. It's personal preference. And this mare is really, really, really broke. So she's had over 18 months of um, basics. That's walk, trot, lope, lead changes, stop, back up, side pass, roll back, um, outside riding, all of that stuff. And now this will be day 10 of her around the barrels. And she's already been hauled um, to some jackpots because I have 149 days until I name my slot horse. If you guys watched Road to the Futurity with Matt Mills, it was the most epic thing to watch. And we wanna recreate a little bit of that here. Oh, have you guys seen her mustache? You see? She, it's a mustache. She must ask you a question. Um, if you guys saw that the, like documentary that he did, it's really, really cool. And I want to do another road to the fraternity. I have four three-year-old candidates for that juvenile spot that I have at the BFA. And I have to name the horse on September 30th and it cannot be changed. And the entry fees are $5,000. So I'm currently working on Flomelo and Golo. Um, Golo is really special to us because um, my mom was losing her battle to cancer and came home and watched this mare be born, named her Golo, spelled it the Louisiana way, we're not sure why, and and then um, she passed just a couple of days later. So she's gonna be a permanent resident, permanent resident with us, and I'm gonna go show you where we're at. Now, my nine days or day 10 may look a lot different than someone else's, and that's the cool part. So this horse is, she's kind of getting it on around the barrels, and she's had a couple of weeks off, so let's just see where we'll go, and hopefully you'll learn something that you can use on your horse. 
So day 10, what we're gonna do is warm up, like she's had a big break, so we're gonna just make sure all of our gears are there. She's a little laid into my leg. Again, I don't have any boots and spurs on. I will in the future, but she's a little laid into my leg. So I'm just gonna move her out, move her off that leg. Practice a little counter arcing. And then I'll just let her come back and soften back the other way. Make sure that she still feels good. And I love to play with counter arcing kind of all over the place. Just making sure that she feels really soft, flexible, like over exaggerating the body English in my body so that she understands it when I get to a barrel and I ask her to turn really quickly. That way she'll be really athletic. So I'm writing in split range, you don't have to do that. But for me, I want to make sure that I'm not having to do a whole lot of pulling, that they're trying to finish the turn on their own. So when I sit like this, they're like doing 90% of the work themselves. And so you see them get a little perturbed about things. I'm just gonna help her make the right decision, get off my leg. My pockets are gonna be enormous because I want her to feel comfortable to come over here and make a turn and not feel like she's gotta dive in or move out or anything crazy. Slide down my rein press a little outside leg. And I love to over finish, so it'll help her stay on the correct lead coming up here. And then I like to over finish here to help her think about maybe changing leads. Because that's kind of the, the next place that a horse needs to change leads. A horse is um, usually faster on one side or the other. So when I, she's just 10 days in, but I still want to really think about, <laughs> crap. I really want to think about forward motion on the backside and she's thinking about it. So I don't stop my horses on the front side of the barrel unless I have a horse that I feel like really needs it. What I want is to follow their nose, use a little outside leg, and then ask them for that forward motion. But cutting off the forward motion, like we used to back in the day, 90s, we would stop a horse, tip their hips to the inside over and over and over again. Now we know we need a horse to lengthen its stride or else we get out. This horse needs to be around for a really, really long time. As you can see, I don't feel like she's bothered much by the alley area of the barrel pattern, but should this change, we're gonna dial it back and I'll choose a different horse for the juvenile or I'll do what I did last year where I thought no horse was ready. And so I completely shut down um, running any horse. I don't, I'm not scared to do that. You can always sell your spot so you're not out those entry fees. So it's about the animal. I, that horse shouldn't be doing all that it's doing right now. Well, that person's gonna hinder your career forever if you're gonna listen to them. And two, how many NFR world champions or horses of the year have they trained? I'll guarantee you zero. Because if your horse gets really bored, if you have an advanced student and you keep doing two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, they're gonna get really, really agitated and bored. Um, this horse even walking this circle is like, can I spin around? Can I do something else for you? Cause this is really boring. So let's take her, she won't be perfect. Um, but let's just see where she's at. I'm feeling like this is a day I shouldn't use split reins. Make a little pass just to make sure she's got her leads and thinking about running barrels and all that good jazz. If you guys want to see this mare make a run compared to Golo, make sure to go follow me on TikTok. I'm tiktok.com forward slash the Fallon T. I'll see you guys over there because I'm really excited to know which horse you think is going to be the one to make it in November. And remember, 
There's two you haven't even seen yet. So this is going to be a major big project as the road to the juvenile is going to start. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. As always, please don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. I can't wait to hear who your pick is. I hope these training sessions and behind the scenes really help someone that you know or help you. You guys, as always, I want you to subscribe, like this vlog. I'm gonna be doing a lot more training sessions as we roll on to the road to the juvenile. So be sure to join me for that. And as always, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time. I came from a non-horse background and wanted to be a professional barrel racer. Now I'm excited to say I am a world champion, but it was a long road to get here and I learned a ton of lessons. I got swindled, taken, had mentors lead me wrong, and now I wanna make something so that you don't have to. 30 plus years of experience have been put in my horse boss's dashboard for hours and hours of lessons in specific categories like hitting barrels, alley issues, when to enter, training your horse, and many, many more. Please join us today, you will not regret it.